Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Semi Soccer Experts Podcast, also known as the C, C Podcast. Adrian, we're on episode what number? 33, my friend. We're 33 episodes strong. 33 episodes strong. Uh, 33, that's a hard number. 33, I think Ramajan has 33 or 34. 34. It's all these my best friends talking about all fucking week. But I'm kind of glad they won it over Barcelona. That's just my opinion. <laughs> no, that's good. No, 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 no. Absolutely. I think uh, this Keeps COVID, it balanced. It's definitely COVID situation uh, helped out Real Madrid a lot. You know, Barcelona had some momentum right before the pandemic, and uh, it shut that momentum down. So right. Real Madrid just took took advantage of that. Yeah. So congratulations to any Blancos fans, um, 34 uh, La Liga championships. On uh, an interesting footnote, which I, I think is a stupid footnote, but Real Madrid, um, Real Madrid, Sergio Ramos has scored more goals in La Liga than Neymar and Ronaldinho. Oh, yeah, I saw that statistic. This is an interesting stat because if you compare the goals to game ratio, Ramos only has 0.15 goals per game, while Neymar and Ronaldinho have. Point three and point six six respectively. Now, obviously, it's an impressive stat for a center back. Mm-hmm. But like, if we take, you know, Sergio Ramos is always a good center back, but he's not the best center back in the world. No one's ever rated him for being a great center back. You know, what, what I you- would say back in twenty fourteen to like twenty sixteen seventeen, I think he was up there for a top center back. To be honest. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, he was definitely – He's he's been a great center back, but world football will never – if world football made a world 11 of 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 ever, Sergio Ramos wouldn't make the C team, I don't think. I think there's sure. plenty of – Well, he's been on team of the years, though, you know. So. He's been on team of the years for sure, but I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't rate him as a center back. You know, Fabio Cannavaro was a center back. He won the Ballon d'Or. He's the last one to do it. He's Van Dyke was close too, but Van Dyke was close. So I I definitely put Van Dyke over him. I put Cavadovar over him. I put um you know someone um there's definitely plenty of other players. I think I, the thing I, with Ramos in my in my mind is that he's one of those he's not like when you think about great, great, great center backs. Obviously he's not gonna be like Cannavaro um and all these other Italian defenders, because they're the only ones I could think of at the top of my head. But he's one that you want on your team, 100%, because he's the one that will take a bullet for you or take a red card or get a yellow. But not in a bad way. I'm just saying, like, he, he doesn't give two shits. If he has to take down a defender – I mean, not a defender, but an attacker, he will do that, you know. He's one of those annoying center backs that I feel like I will put in the work and, you know, give that dedication. That's why he is still you know, the captain. You know, I, I, think, I think you're missing a really key guy. Like, you described someone – that played for Manchester United to the T. Can you think of that center back? He retired maybe three, four years ago. Vintage? Vintage. <laughs> I want him. If I wanted a center back to kill people, it's him. Oh, yeah, because Vintage. You know, I, let shits. me tell you, I, I had the pleasure of meeting Vintage. Nicest guy in the world. You would not expect him to be the, the like beast. Serbian killer. <laughs> Serbian killer. Like, uh, there's an image of him where he had – I think he got hit in the head and him bleeding, but him yeah. playing throughout the game, that's the center back I want. And I'm sure Ramos has been hit also bled, but if you're talking about dangerous center backs, I think Vidic. Vidic is your guy. No, I, I totally get that. But, you know, in the, like I say, in this day and age, I would I would love to have Ramos over Harry Maguire as my leading center. Oh, uh, no, yeah. I mean, if you, if you compare Harry Maguire – yeah, <laughs> and no disrespect to the guy, but I would take Ramos. Yeah, too. I, I, you know, and my my other favorite center back, uh, he plays for PSG, the Brazilian national team. Um, Thiago Silva. Thiago Silva. I, I like him. Hmm. Uh, like, I think I think he's a very he's hard nosed, tough, and uh, you know, he's not a spectacular guy. He's not a Ramos. He's not a Vidge in, in terms of he gets a lot of attention, but I think he gets the job done. If you're talking about a different type of center back, I, I take him. 
But, yeah, I uh, think he's he's come of age, um, Thiago Silva. Um, like the last like five, six, ten years, you can rate them as like one of the top center backs. He was instrumental in that 2014 World Cup. But, no. you know, the funny thing is he got injured pretty much, just not, not injured or suspended, one of the two, I can't remember, um, against that final game against Germany for um, the semifinals. Yeah, he was suspended. Out. He was, I think he was suspended because uh, at that game. Against the Columbia uh, game, right? No, 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 no. The, uh, if he got suspended, I don't know when he got suspended, but uh, David Luiz was the captain for Brazil during that game. Yeah, what a transition going from a captain like Thiago Silva. To, to I, I feel bad. <laughs> David Luiz is not the best center back in the world, but I think he tries a lot. and He's just had bad luck. He's had really bad luck. He's just a CDM trying to be a center back. That's my best. Well, best yeah, I agree. All right, but let's get into enough about center backs. You know, not my position, but uh, <laughs> let's get into the, you know, the meat of the MLS podcast. is back. <laughs> MLS is back. Yes, it's, it's been back for a while, but uh, we just uh, we got set with the knockout stages already, right? Yeah, we're in the round of sixteen as we speak. Uh, so great. I'll break it down. Like it hmm? I feel like it was really quick. It did – well, it only went, like, what, two weeks? But it flew by because there was only so many games going on, you know, just to keep, you know, keep intact of everything that happened. Obviously, you're just like, oh, shit, this, 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 is. And you remember, two teams got um, – didn't even start – I mean, didn't even play any games. And I'm talking about Nashville and um, Dallas. They're the ones who got screwed right. out of this, um, unfortunately. Um, but with that, though – we're in the round of 16. Um, we're down to, surprisingly, our friends at NYCFC made it through. <laughs> Even though they won one game and lost two, but they got the third place. So because of that, they're going to be facing Toronto FC. Um, you got Philadelphia against New England. Sporting KC against Vancouver. Portland against Cincinnati. Orlando against Montreal. And then this game I really want to see is Seattle versus LAFC. It's July 27th, 11 p.m. Eastern. You also got San Jose, Rio, San Lake, and Columbus and Minnesota. So it's not too bad. But out of that, I – and it's crazy because Seattle uh, against LAFC, those are, like, pretty much teams that you would see in the final. So they're facing each other in round 16. Pretty much whoever wins that, it's, it's, I would predict to go all the way. Interesting matchup. Uh, but, you know, just, just to see season being very short, you know, it kind of – takes this again like i've said this before it takes the seriousness out of it um i don't know, I, I just don't know it feels weird it just feels weird how quick we got to this point yeah. you know and i think i think the players like themselves are, World Cup. yeah they're not they're not even the, the players themselves are not taking this seriously i don't think i think chicharito left with a calf strain and i don't think he went back right no nah, he no nah, and Galaxy didn't even advance so they they were just like fuck it we're out <laughs> Um, but I get what you mean because what I've seen too, like a lot of the games and like it's been criticized too on Twitter that the gameplay is not, you know, up to par where it should be MLS. A lot of players slipping, wrong passes, horrible own goals. I, I retweeted some of my own Twitter page. Like it's just, it's been pretty much a glorified friendly. Like what we discussed when the other teams were playing in Europe, when they were starting up their first couple of games. Because, you know, they didn't really have a full – like, they had a preseason, but then COVID happened, and then they had to rush back, you know, get tested, and now start playing again. So, obviously, you know, the match fitness is probably not there 100%, and there's still, like, a lot of, like, rust going on with all the players and teams. Right, right. You, know, and they, you know what's interesting uh, since this all started? A lot of noise regarding COVID testing and COVID – infections died down yeah you know i, I think they as soon as um nashville and dallas got um taken out they were just like yo we have to take this a lot more serious we have to make sure all the players are accounted for you know we don't want to get more bad because they were getting a lot of bad pr about this um mls so i guess they just had to step it up a notch and just you know make sure everybody was yeah. Following protocol, no one breaking like um, whatever quarantine or whatever the case may be. So, right. or leave they the did, um, What was it? They did like start testing daily. Yeah, which I, they weren't doing before. And I think their test results. I don't know if they because that's the thing with the COVID test. Because there's some tests where you could do the rapid testing and find out in like 20 minutes, 
or you just do the regular test where you can find out the next day or like a couple of days. But I'm pretty sure they got like next day results or something of that matter. Right, right, right. I'm pretty sure they paid for like, you know, quality and, you know, making ensuring that the proper tests were being done for all the players. Right. So hopefully, you know, the rest of the season continues without uh, any any COVID results. You know, another another point is that Disney World just opened up recently again. So I don't know, like, especially regarding NBA as well, since both NBA and MLS are there. Yeah. I. I you know, I would want to think, and obviously this is a large, uh, Walt Disney World is, is a massive, massive facility, uh, grounds and whatnot. But, you know, maybe they discussed, uh, are they going to open the park? And if they are, are they allowing the public in? Because we don't want to be there if the public's coming in with the virus. Yeah. You know, so uh, how what, what I'm assuming, I think what they do before they let the public in is they do that. Um, the heat check thermometer check oh, the check everyone that comes in that makes sense yeah I would, that would be you know <clears throat> it's not a hundred percent but you know it's some safeguard better than none yeah. um, so I, f- I find that interesting that again you know you have two multi-million dollar billion dollar organizations renting out your your space and then as Walt Disney's like hey we can still make money let's open up the the place to the public. And you saw, I don't know if you saw, but the day they opened, there was like lines of cars ready to go into Disney World. Ridiculous. And like, it can't be good. Because at some point, I feel like staff, Disney World staff, you know, they intersect yeah. at some point with the both with both the bubbles. Yeah, I'm so, pretty sure they do. Like, I don't know specifically how big that complex is in Disney World, but I'm pretty sure you're going to have some people within the staff that do like probably interact with people from MBA or MLS in that matter, because, you know, you can only go through so many areas and you just might, you know, end up seeing a MBA or an MLS player on the side. So it is risky. And like, for me, in my opinion, I do not, I don't think Disney world should be open personally. Um, I, I, I don't think it should be open either. But Hey, the mouse wants to make money. So they got to do what they got to do. The mouse, the mouse is in charge, you know? Mm-hmm. Um. All right. Enough about Disney World, Agent. What other topic? You know, let's transition away from the states for a bit. Let's go to the old continent. What do we got? So, what well, what's been going on recently, and this is one of the biggest news that I think we should definitely talk and break down is on the Manchester City um, ban. So, for those who don't know, Manchester City was banned um, from. The, the club financial c- control body, CFCB, they found City committed serious breaches of financial fair play, FFB, FFP. Um, they pretty much breached their regulations. And b- b- due to that, they limited um, pretty much what they did was like they didn't it, it process the correct number of like net losses. And they saw something shady off of that. And because of that, they didn't. And they said City was not cooperating. And with that, they were just like, all right, you know what? You guys are banned. You, you owe 30, you're going to owe us 30 million and pay, pay, pretty much pay that off in fines. And because of that city, which is like, whoa, Champions League's are bread and butter. You know, we make money going there. So they, were, they, they literally, like, if you didn't see the, the pictures on Twitter, it's like they had a whole team of lawyers, which I'm pretty sure they paid a lot of money for, to appeal to the court ar- arbitration. And then just recently, uh, on July 13th, two Mondays ago, they, they pretty much found City not guilty. And, and in that aspect, it draw a lot of ire, not just from, like, fans all over, but um, you also had um, the coaches, like, in Liverpool and Tottenham, um, Jurgen Klopp, I can't believe I forgot his name, um, Jurgen Klopp pretty much was just, like, saying it's a bad day for football, it's not a good day. Because pretty much saying, why, you know, how do they get to win this appeal? Like, if they were already found guilty, and Mourinho even took it, like, <laughs> took it a step further. He's like, it's disgraceful. You know, if you're found guilty, you're found guilty. You, you should face the consequences for it. If you're not found guilty, then don't pay a fine or, you know, whatever the case may be. And, and I agree. I tend to agree more with Mourinho on this because he makes a good sense. He's just like, hey, if you were found guilty for, you know, cooking your books or whatever the case may be, obviously you should be held accountable for that. 
maybe a ban or maybe whatever the case may be. But like, since with the arbitrary, they're just like, hey, you know, we don't see nothing wrong. Um, we did see like some suspicious, but we didn't see that as like a big thing, you know, to charge, to hold them accountable for. And we reviewed the books, blah, blah, blah. In my opinion, I think city's lawyers just process so much fucking paperwork that the arbitration is just like, fuck it, just let them be. But that's just my thought. Yeah, so the, the court found that there was insignificant, insignificant, insignificant evidence for uh, Man City to be accused of, you know, the, uh, cooking the books. Supposedly. Which, which it's, it's probably, you know, and, and this is leading more towards conspiracy theory and whatnot, but there's probably definitely somebody lost some papers, some documents where the court probably didn't have all the evidence to process uh, to make a, a rightful decision. Now, I, I will play devil's advocate and say maybe, you know, maybe they did it, which I highly doubt it, but maybe they did it. Maybe they actually did everything right by the book. Um, there was a lot of backlash, especially um, from Serie A Twitter. Uh, they were talking about how, you know, obviously Serie A has a bigger issues with money, but they were talking about how they're always under the microscope. They're always being scrutinized. They're always forced to... Uh, follow the financial fair play um you know so that's interesting that that's very it's very unfair for everybody else but at the same time you know i, I look at an organization as uh, as what what wafer is and they're bread and butter now remember epl what the epl is is separate from wafer you know wafer has no say and really has, doesn't have a lot of say in wafer wafer makes its money from the europa league and the champions league and the Supercopa and, you know, All the other... international tournaments. Like yeah, international sure. right? tournaments, right. To band a brand such as Man City. Now, Man City is not the biggest brand, but it is a large brand, a significant brand that commands, you know, again, we talk about your eyeballs. Wouldn't that be shooting yourself in the foot? Hey, I got one of my most powerful brands and I want to band them from my my only net revenue source, one of my biggest revenue sources, right? So something, I think something bigger was at play, you know, because why would UEFA, unless either someone more powerful like Real Madrid and Barcelona got on, on their butts and said, hey, if you're going to scrutinize us, you better scrutinize them as well. And that's the thing, because they both were um... – Weren't they both not banned from UEFA, but they were banned from like they got a transfer ban though. From they whatever. both had a transfer ban. Uh, yeah, because what they were I don't know if if anyone remembers the story, but basically they were promising young players a future in in, in Spain from all other parts of the world. Their families would move to Spain and you know, unfortunately the child grows up to be 18, 20, doesn't make it to the first team. Now a whole family has moved because basically they thought the child was going to be the next superstar and support the family. So that that's not a good situation either. Yep, yep. But so again, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say because I'm trying to think. I don't know if the Barca ban was due to Neymar or something like that, but no, the I, Barca ban, the Barca ban was due for them of. Uh, you know, getting youth players and promising things that weren't true. Yeah, what I'm looking right now, too, it, you may, it makes a lot more sense. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So pretty much they promised 10, sign, ten potential signings, all youth, youth team players, actually nine youth team players, and the one player from Sasulu, I cannot pronounce it. I'm sorry if I butchered their name. But regardless, um, nine um, under-18 players who were promised, you know, to transfer over to Barca, but obviously that didn't work out. And they pretty much got banned because, like you said, they were promised the future. But however, they, you know, got – they did not actually make through. And whatever, whatever happened to them happened to them. <laughs> so, you know, going back full circle, it's very interesting because, again, Man City is a very powerful brand, but they're – the richest, if not the richest, you know, club in the world. Next to PSG, I think they're right there. Right, next to PSG. 
So it's hard to say that they didn't buy their way out of this mess. Yeah. You know, and again, they probably hired a team of lawyers, the most expensive lawyers, the best lawyers, you know, got them on loan, whatever, bought a transfer ban, whatever. But, you know, it's hard not to relate that they didn't try to get their way out of this mess. Yeah. No. <clears throat> and that's a shitty thing, too, though, because now with City getting away with this, what kind of precedent, what kind of precedent does that set for next? Our team's going to like, hey, you know what? If they can do that, maybe we can do that too. Cook our books. Because I did hear about like some players, especially like Sergio Aguero. He was given like some like some money under the table, and, and that was not including his contract. Um, I don't know if it was a signing bonus or anything like that, but that was one rumor that I did hear. So you know, there's a lot of you know greaseball shit that that goes on with that. Right. So now I'm just like. With this happening, pretty much any team, like, well, not any team, but, you know, high p- money paying teams that can pay off lawyers just like City did, they, could, they pretty much feel like they can get away with this. What are my, uh, hold on, my audio, my video. The audio's still good. <laughs> no technical difficulties. No technical. All right, we're back. Um, yeah, no, no, right. It sets that precedent, you know. Definitely Real Madrid, Barca. Any team with money is going to try this. Yeah. You know, I would definitely try this. If I ran a club, I was like, hey, how much does it cost for this problem to go away? Exactly. You know. You know you- also, you know, you want to think of all the other players involved. Puma as a brand, that's their biggest, that's their biggest contract is Man City. You know, outside of that, it's Dortmund and AC Milan. You know, Dortmund doesn't have that much. I, I – I want to say Dortmund has more fans. Is there a more traditional club? You, you would like – people like Dortmund better. Oh, hell yeah. But Man City probably has more fans. <coughs> uh, so, you know, what does Puma have at stake? Their biggest – one of their biggest assets is going to be out of away for Champions League. They definitely probably provide some type of resources. Yeah, they like in resource, they probably like, hey, you can borrow one of our lawyers, you know, to help you get out of this shit. Right. So and I think about, it was a collaborative effort, not just from Puma, but all Fly their Emirates. fucking sponsorships, look, to be look honest. Fly, Fly Emirates, you know, they, obviously they have... I bet you all those fucking lawyers flew through Emirates. Just yeah, they, probably, they probably said Fly Emirates, I was like, okay, you're going to go fix this problem? We're going to give you uh, the big jumbo jet that, that has the beds, the spas in it. Like, you guys get to go. Go fix this problem. Mm-hmm. You that know, so... Great crazy <laughs> so, so it's like if one club if, if this club gets banned you know it's all collateral damage as well yeah you know, so all these these companies have you know every interest even and you know i think most likely they didn't really collaborate but they definitely it's like hey if you need assistance we will provide we're here to help, yeah. we're here to help you know and that's the thing because and that's the thing that's the two sides of the coin that people you know were real didn't realize like you know if City did that, the ban was upheld. City was going to be out of the Champions League, and with that, you, you know the dominoes are, will start falling because of that. Because, you know, Pep, will Pep stay? You know, he's not going to play Champions League football. It's not just about Pep staying, but it's about the players too. You got a, high, a lot of high caliber players. You got Bernardo Silva. You got Kevin De Bruyne, who's p- pushing thirty. You got Mares. You got Gabriel Jesus. Sane just left. He could give two shits. But, like, all these other players, like Rodri, et cetera, like, they want to play for a Champions League football team, and they're like, hey, we're not going to play Champions League? The fuck is this? You know, you guys do a high tail it. That's the other thing. It's not that they just want to play. There is probably clauses in their contract that state, if I'm not playing Champions League football, I can leave my contract and find a team that's playing Champions League football. You know, it's also a contractual obligation. A lot of these players say, hey, you know, we need to be playing in the Champions League. Or, otherwise, either either increase my salary or let me go. Mm-hmm. You know, and so it's, it's a lot of, lot of moving pieces. A lot of people, you know, would be hurt. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, it's an interesting, interesting scenario overall. Yeah, it's it's a big what if, and that's the crazy thing because this thing could have gone either way, in my opinion. The bank could have just been upheld. 
But I don't think it would have been for a year. I mean, not not for two years. I think it would have been one year. One I year. think that would have in my if I was to do it, I would have been like banned for one year, pay thirty million, and you know all that shit goes to charity and etc. Let's be honest, they gotta drop to ten million, but the thirty million is still just pocket change for them. It is. It's fucking pocket change. Even Mourinho said the resources are money. That's not. That's nothing to them. They print money. Exactly. So th- that's why. That's why I was saying. Like, I think the fair way to get out. You know, to you know, to mitigate this was to get because they were found guilty initially, and I think would have been fair for everyone. Would have been for them, not just for me personally as a Manchester United fan, because we we can still make Champions League on our own, but. Hopefully that doesn't bite me in the ass coming Sunday. But <laughs> um, how many games are left? This is the last game, Championship Sunday, 11 a.m. Everyone's playing. So with that going on, um, shit, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> but anyways, what I was trying to say, I think the fair way is that a one-year punishment would have been the best thing to do for City because they were found guilty. No, you know, other teams go through this on a yearly basis. They probably check their books. They have some representative from Financial Fair Play doing this, et cetera. You know, so I think that's why um, the outrage is on. And it was funny, though, because when Pep did his interview after they were found not guilty, he was so relieved. He's like, it's a good day. We're not found guilty. You know, if anything, they should apologize to us. I'm like, you bald fuck. <laughs> you lucky you got away with murder right now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty yeah. much what they did. <laughs> We got away. Uh, uh, very lucky. All right. Uh, Adrian, you know, enough about Man City. We're staying in England or where are we going? What's the next topic? Uh, are we going to talk about friends in Leeds? Our friends at Leeds United. Leeds United just won the championship <laughs> and they are now in the Premier League. Uh, a lot of uh, credit is due to Marcelo Bielsa for revolutionizing Leeds United. Uh, the whole City of Leeds is ext- extremely grateful, happy, and he is now a club legend. So I, I do wish him all the best in the Premier League. I think they will do good. Uh, I want to say they'll, cha- they'll challenge for a cha- uh, spot in the championship. And, um, I mean, not the championship, the Europa League. Sure. The, yeah. And, you know, it's going to be really interesting because, you know, Marcelo Bielsa as a coach is well-respected. He's going to be uh, attracting a lot of players who are at the end of their contracts and say, hey, I want to play in the Premier League, and hey, I want to play under Marcelo Bielsa. That's so, what I'm going to say. Do you have any I, – unfortunately, I don't know anything about the coach, so do you have any knowledge about him? Yes. So, I mean, he, he's very influential. I'll tell you this. That's Pep Guardiola's – one of Pep Guardiola's me- mentors. Yeah. You know, so that that – in itself says a lot, you know. Um, he coached the Argentinian national team. He coached Marseille for a bit. He was at New. He started his career at New Wells. Um, he's highly well respected. He he's method. He's obsessed with working. Like he has, he works. He works. He he he's very detail oriented. He's um, you know, but he's just a, a really, you know, charismatic guy. These players fight for this guy. These players. Pretty much like a Simeone. Yes, very much like a Simeone, you know. Gotcha. But his 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 philosophies. Everybody, you know, Simeone is someone who who talks to him, who takes from him. You know, there's a lot of coaches that listen to what he has to say and learn from him. You know, he's 65 years old. He's he's at retirement age, and but people still like. I want to learn under Marcelo Bielsa. Uh, but, you know, we're not going to talk about the coaching side as much as I want to. Uh, <laughs> the big news is they were a Kappa. Kappa? Am I saying it right? Kappa. I think oh, it's Kappa. Kappa, yeah, yeah. Kappa. Kappa. They, no, I think it's Kappa. I don't Kappa. know. The fucking youth are wearing this shit nowadays, and that's how you know I'm old. Kappa <laughs> is... <laughs> They uh they they did their kits. They were the kit supplier. As soon as they won the Champions League championship, and were promoted to the Premier League, they right away signed it with Adidas. Which is smart. 
So I'm very interested in this deal. I want to know the details of it. I don't think it's fair for Kappa to say, hey, we are the team that we sponsored, that we put money into, made it to Premier League, now we get ditched as a, as a kid sponsor. <laughs> you know? I yeah, think they should have had it. You know, there probably was a clause in the contract that says, "Hey, if we meet, if we win, if we get to the Premier League, we get to choose our our kid sponsor." You know, and obviously Adidas is a better kid sponsor. Um, though I do like the the, the Kappa designs a little better. You know, it is on a distrib- distribution scale, Adidas would be better. You know, we also think about distributions, licensing rights, who gets to sell, who gets to buy. That sort of thing. So it's yeah. very important. Um, yeah. Yeah, the beneficial thing about them joining the Premier League is not just getting the sponsorship of Adidas, but also the television money. Television that, money. That really helps That's out Beats point. as a whole. That can and that would and with that and the sponsorship money, that can actually attract them to buy some decent quality players. Before we went live, I was we were talking about Cavani. And that Cavani is rumored to actually join Leeds. Cavani's and the thought of that would be very interesting. <laughs> Cavani's been rumored to go to into Miami. Well, we, we don't even know where he would go because I, you know. I, I hope I hope he goes to Leeds United. I like to see. Uh, he's a very, he's a very Slatan esque player. <laughs> he's uh he's he can score goals. That's the thing about him. Cavani. Those really nice goals. Yes. I I would like to see him in uh. A Leeds United. Um, you know, there's always been the uh, the kind of the routine of players from great clubs at the end of their contracts going to the recently promoted uh, championship team into the Premier League. A couple years back, Esteban Cambiaso left into Milan at towards the end of his career, and he joined Leicester City. Yeah, he and did. he was one year away from winning the Premier League, but yeah, if he stayed that extra year, <laughs> he would have won the Premier League. Yeah, I think it would have been great for him. I would have loved to seen him lift that trophy over there, you know. But you know, uh, another, you know, just switching a little gears now. Let's go to Italy. Roma is at the end of their Nike contract. Roma, Roma, and it's really interesting because they. You know they're not they're not challenging again, and I think this is a contract issue that especially with Nike you have to you have to make certain uh, uh, league positions. Mm-hmm. They're no longer going to be Nike, and I'm an Inter Milan fan, but Roma had some very nice jerseys over the last few few years. Yeah, you know, they've had some very nice very nice Nike jerseys, and I think it's a shame that Roma is losing this uh, kit deal. I think they're going to Kappa as well. Yeah, I, I think I heard something like that. But, you know, I can't fault them because – and the funny thing was, like, what, two, three years ago, Roma knocked out Barcelona at the Champions League with, oh. the, with the comeback they did in Rome. Um, and, last, year, um, last year's Champions uh, League. I think it was last year's Champions League. Was it like, shit, time flies by. Yeah, it was, so it was probably last year's. Oh, maybe, or maybe two years ago. No, no, I think it might be – you might be right two years ago. Yeah, yeah, it was two years ago because that they fought, they went against Liverpool, I think, in the semis. That's why. Yeah, 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 yeah. They lost to Liverpool in the semis, and then Liverpool lost in against Real Madrid. Real Madrid, correct? Because that was in Andres Iniesta's last last season with Barcelona. So yeah, two years ago. But you know, it, it's a team that has the potential, but unfortunately, because again, they lack a lot of money, they can't hold on to their players. Mm-hmm. So eventually, you 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 build a great team. You handpick them. And, I mean, you start buying their plays, and then they, obviously they go down. But, again, it's like – it's a great kit. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a great – I like the kit. There's a lot of teams in Italy that I like. I, I can't wear them, but I like them. Even AC Milan's? <laughs> I will never wear that jersey. But I, I, a funny story, my cousin bought me an AC Milan jersey because that she thought that's the team I like. I never wore it. <laughs> never wear it. It was a nice jersey too. It was, uh, it was the one with the white collar. Really, really. It was. I'm pretty sure it was a real jersey. She got it in Colombia. <laughs> it it oh, was. Nice she jersey. was thoughtful. <laughs> I'm not going to wear it. Sorry. But again, it's. It's. I. I. I feel it's a. 
it's a shame to lose Ro- or Nike's Roma to Nike. That's a shame. That's a loss. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, they haven't qualified. Because think about it in Serie A, it's like you guys are having resurgence. You know, Juve is being Juve. Atlanta came out of fucking nowhere. <laughs> and Lazio is actually doing pretty good as well. And that's their fucking, like, it's like their man city. They, they're they actually doing better than Roma right now. So right. it sucks how much, like, how good you were. And then, like, in a few years, you know, you, you're not the same. You're not where you used to be. So right, right, right. it's kind of shit that happens. All right. Last point that I want to end with. Really funny point. Uh, it really doesn't have much to do with, with business or money, but it's rumored that Lionel, Lionel, Lionel Messi's father bought an apartment in Milan. He wants, probably wants to see Italian soccer over there. <laughs> I, hope he, I hope he just, he wants to do more than uh, uh, watch Italian soccer. I'd be gutted if he went to AC Milan. I, I would, I'd be very gutted. Yeah, I, I don't think, I don't think he would go to AC Milan, to be honest. But listen, he, he, I read somewhere, and this makes sense, because back when he was a kid, there was a lot of Argentine playing in Inter Milan. Yeah. You know? And he said that if he – that was the team that he used to like to watch was Inter Milan. Now, you I have – I that. And, and if you, th- you think about Lautaro Martinez, the next promising Argentinian striker – Messi wants to play with him because Messi was trying to get him to Barcelona. What about Dybala? <laughs> you know, I feel bad for Dybala because Dybala was a good player. And now he, you know, maybe he's playing he second out. fiddle to Ronaldo. Playing second fiddle, which is, you know, I, I think he's smart enough to understand this is Cristiano Ronaldo, one of, if not the greatest player ever. I think he's, he's taking a match to learn from him. Yeah. You know, but however, he hasn't like performed as good as he should be. You know, right? No, he should he should be a lot better for the promise that he was. He should be doing a lot better. He reminds me a lot of Mario Gotze, who started off amazing and now is out of a contract at Dortmund. And I gotta follow up to see where he's rumored to yeah, go. Where is Gotze going? <laughs> That's the other thing too. That I haven't checked, but shit, I would love to take him in Manchester United. He still, I I believe the kid the kid still has quality. He's He's a great footballer. He's clutch. He's shown that in the World Cup. He can play. He can play as a number 10. He can play as a central mid. Like, so, why not? <laughs> right, right. No, why not? But, you know, again, uh, I think, and also with, with Messi regarding Inter Milan, you have Javier Zanetti, who is... Zanetti. That man is a class act. That man is a gentleman. That man is one of... That is one of the few footballers who've never who's never had controversy over anything. He's yeah. never been seen drunk. He's never been caught out late with a, a different woman. He's never... I say that about Ryan out. Giggs. He's fine. <laughs> and, and, and I forgive, forgive my Argentinians, but please, like, he's never been caught saying something racist. <laughs> you know, well, he's, yeah. he's a class act. And I feel like he's someone that... He's one of the few people in the world that if he calls Messi, Messi will pick up. Okay. You know, because Javier, Javier Zanetti does everything right by everybody. Yeah, and I, I think Messi, like, Messi personally looks up to him as well. Absolutely. Like, he's a gentleman. He wants to be respected. And I think Messi, Messi should be respected regardless because of what he's done. But because he hasn't delivered the World Cup to Argentina, you know, people want to kill him, which I, th- I think is unfair. But at the same time, you know, Javier Zanetti is respected. He can talk to him. You have people like Diego Milito, who won the Champions League, who's another well-respected person for Inter Milan and well-respected in Argentina. Hernan Crespo played for Inter Milan. Esteban Cambiaso played for Inter Walter Samuel. Plenty of Argentines have played for them, who are gentlemen, class act men, men who are not problematic. <laughs> so I... I so, I was going to say, you know, until, what about your homeboy, <laughs> the striker? <laughs> uh, Martinez? No, 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 the other one. Icardi, the wife stealer. <laughs> but that's the thing. He does not like, they don't like each other. I know. Well, the rumor with that is, is that, um, uh, what's his name? What's, um, it's an, oh, Maxi Rodriguez. Maxi Rodriguez. 
Maxi Rodriguez and Messi are friends. Yeah. But when but this friends. happened, Messi said, I don't want to deal with Icardi. And listen, back before Icardi was a, a serious problem, you know, back before Icardi was a serious problem, it was rumored that Messi said, I don't want him in the national team. And who is any coach to say to deny Messi request? Yeah, because if not, Messi's like, fuck you, I'm not playing, I'm retiring. <laughs> I'm not retiring, fuck you. Or, you know, you want you want your best player to be comfortable so he can perform at his best. Yeah. You know, but eventually they had to give in and give Cardi a chance because <clears throat> as much as I don't like him, he's a great footballer. He's a great footballer. He's a great footballer. That That's the truth. You can't deny that. <laughs> but that's why he's not an inter because he ain't a class act. He's out. <laughs> yeah, he definitely wasn't. <laughs> funny, when Lukaku came, they handed number nine to Lukaku. They took it. It's like we don't want. We don't care what you. Yeah, do. They, that was like they don't give a fuck. They were just like, hey, we we're dealing you. We'll loan you out, transfer you out. We got Lukaku. They gave him. They gave him the uh, number seven. They gave yeah. Icardi the number seven, which he. Oh, he okay. Him. I thought they were just shelling him out. No, they. I think for for you know rules and having rosters, they had to give him a number. They just gave him seven because Lukaku came in. I want number nine, and that was no problem. All right, but to close this out, Messi's going to Inter Milan. You heard it here first. Well, if he does, that'll be another cold day in hell. No, I'm joking. It will, be, it will be a great day for Serie A. I don't say. Well, we'll see. It depends how how far he, you know how far he can take you guys in Inter. But it's all speculation and rumor. There's there is sayings that Messi is unhappy with Barcelona, and you can you can relate this to how it's been going now, especially with the last not the last game but the second to last game when they gave up the title um, to Real Madrid. They were Messi was quoted saying, you know, we play like this against Napoli, we're gonna be knocked out. And shit, Messi was just in his feelings that day. You know, you could tell he was just unhappy. And think about it, if Barcelona in the same way next year, who knows? Maybe he just wants to go. Because, you know, there's a lot of people. He's always going to have his detractors saying, oh, Messi's great in Spain, but why couldn't he do it in England? We're going to do it in Italy. He couldn't do it in Germany, et cetera. But, yeah, granted, sure. but you can see how great he's done it in Champions League games against all these teams. So it kind of doesn't really matter. I just think it just depends on the type of team he's with and how he, you know, he performs with the team. That's all I know. He's a great player, but, you know, one player doesn't make a whole fucking team. No, you're right. But I think... You know, just to add to Conte's project, a lot of players talk about Conte and they say they like the work that he does. And he's also a very charismatic guy to work under. But, you know, again, like you said, speculation is rumor. I hope the rumor is true. So we'll see. As soon as, soon as his name got go to MLS. <laughs> that would give him a spike. <laughs> he's not going to MLS, not before he goes to Inter. All right. <laughs> I think that's it for today. Yes. So this we're wrapping up our um, podcast. So this is number 33 in the books. Um, next episode, we'll probably just talk about um, the fallout from the Premier League. Um, the upcoming Champions League is is coming up soon, which I'm excited about. And speculation for how the next season is going to be, because now they're saying the Premier League is going to start middle of September, which is a little like literally a month later than how it was. So not bad. I'm just, yeah, exactly. So we'll get we'll talk a little bit about that and discuss about it. But we want to thank you guys for listening and have a great night. Have a great night.